Okay. All right, guys. Um, this video is intended to be a review of the skeletal system for the test that's coming up. And, um, and so we're just going to jump right in. I don't really have as solid of a plan as I would like at this point for the video. So <laughs> we're just going to see um, if we can review. Um, so firstly, let's look at the skull. Okay. Um, where's my screen? Here we go. Okay, so this is from the textbook. I feel like it's not focused very well, and I don't know what to do. Okay, this is from the textbook. Um, firstly, what is the bone labeled in yellow? And I feel like I have to navigate away from this page for just a second because I can't remember. I knew that. It's the frontal bone. You should have said the frontal bone. Okay, going, coming back here. What about this darker purple right below the yellow bone? What is that called? The nasal bone. How about the blue on either uh, cheekbone? What is, what is that bone called? You should have said it's the zygomatic arch or this um, zygomatic bone. How about this lavender color um, on top of your upper teeth? You should have said the maxilla and then your jawbone here. What is that called? That would be your mandible. Okay, and then let's look at the two big bones that are in the back. So, like, what is this big red highlighted bone? She just said the parietal bone. And then this, this brown color on the bottom portion of the skull. Hopefully you said occipital. Okay. And then there's another one. Let me switch pages here. There's a side view that we'll look at briefly. Hopefully we can get this all in, in our view. It's going to be tough. It's like on the other side of the book. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to cover up all the important terms. Okay, um, yeah, I mostly got it. Let's see here. I mostly got it. I'm gonna add some paper to like cover up this other spot here. Oh, perfect, okay. Let's go back to the screen. <laughs> okay, we're looking at this picture on the left. <clears throat> um, what bone? is highlighted with this red color here. That's the parietal bone again. Hopefully you said parietal. And this orange, that's our temporal bone. Um, what about this um, behind our like eyeball, like right next to the temporal bone? And it's um, kind of pink, like a hot pink color. I think that's our xiphoid, or sphenoid, excuse me. That's the sphenoid. That's this, you guys really can't see these words anyway, but that's this, the sphenoid bone. Um, when I was in college, we did need to know the ethmoid and the lacrimal, but I, um, I'm not gonna require you to learn those. Got our zygomatic bone, our mandible, our maxilla, occipital. What's this yellow one called again? It's a frontal bone, okay. Um, so you should be able to recognize it from the side as well. The, the orange one is our temporal bone. Um, something that we didn't talk about um, that I think would be really cool to understand and to know a little bit more about would be the three bones that are inside your inner ear. Um, I would encourage you to like learn a little bit about that. It's very, very cool. Um, and then, um, yeah, if you wanted to, you could look at some of these other, these other ones, like mastoid process, styloid process, um, the mandibular notch. Um, most likely what I'll do on the test, um, like this is a mandibular notch right here, this little dip in the bone. This is like a process here. Most likely what I'll do is I'll tell you, like this is the, you know, styloid blank. And then you're gonna have to tell me, is this most likely a process, a notch, a foramen? Um, is it, I think there's a couple other terms I asked you, a fossa, another term I asked you to, to memorize. Um, where's the fossa in this picture, by the way? It's mostly on this temporal bone, 
right in here. It's this dip on the side of your skull um, where it goes in just a little bit. Okay. Um, let me pick another section either in the textbook or I might just have, I might just show it on my cute little skeleton. Yeah, I think I'll just show it on my, on my skeleton here. Let's talk about the rest of the bones. Oh, let me take out this fuzzy. I found out how to do the backgrounds and I have like this blurry background. I'm going to undo that so you can see the skeleton. Okay. Also, I realize there's like distracting stuff on my board back here. I'll just erase that. Don't be distracted. Okay. So we just identified a lot of the bones in the skull. Um, and um, yes, so next we're going to, <laughs> um, we'll review the other bones. Okay, so tell me a little bit about um, what is this bone right here in the middle called? Hopefully you called it the sternum. I need to pull out my other worksheet. Um, that is the sternum. Oh, there's three parts to the sternum. I can't remember them off the top of my head. I remember most of them. Ooh, now we're getting to it. Ah, I found it. Okay, what is this main middle portion of the sternum called? It's the body of the sternum. How about the, um, the little, like, a square looking bone up at the top. It's the manubrium. And then what about this little um, bit down here? This is the xiphoid process. Sorry, sphenoid process is up here in the skull. The xiphoid process is this guy down here. Um, what is this bone right on his collar? It's the clavicle. Good, and then the first several ribs um, that are in the rib cage would be the true ribs. Um, what comes after the true ribs down here? Hopefully you said false ribs. And then in the back, there should be at least one more set of these than what there actually are. But what do we call these last ones down here? The floating ribs, okay? On the pos posterior view, we've got um, the spine as well. Um, so what is this first section of the spine that makes up like kind of like our neck? It's the cervical vertebrae. How about um, this part that's connected to our rib cage? Hopefully you said thoracic vertebrae. Um, the lower back portion That is our lumbar vertebrae. And then what's this part of our, uh, that attaches to our pelvis? Hopefully you said the coccyx and, or say, I'm so sorry, that's the sacrum. And then the coccyx is the little, um, little tiny bone at the very bottom. It's your tailbone. Okay, it's coccyx. Um, now we have covered um, the first part of the skeleton. All those parts that we just talked about from the coccyx up the spine, the rib cage, and the skull. Um, what part of the skeleton are all of those a part of? Hopefully you said the axial skeleton. Okay. Um, and then the next part, which in, includes all of our limbs, what is that part of the skeleton called? The appendicular skeleton. Okay. Um, I would, by the way, love for you to know the very two cervical vertebrae, and um, that could be sort of like a something that gets you from a 7.5 to an 8. You know what I mean? Like that detail would be really great. Um, and those two are called the atlas and I think the axis. Watch, I probably got one of those wrong. One of them is definitely the atlas. And then, yeah, the other one is the axis. Um, one of them allows us to move our head like, um, well, one allows us to move our head side to side. 
Um, the other one is more like up and down, I, th I think like this direction, but like when you put them together, it gives us like a great range of motion. So those two are kind of important. The atlas and the axis. And I'd love for you to know the main features of each vertebrae. So let me switch my screen over here. Present no. Okay, so um, I want you to know the vertebral foramen, which is like the hole in the middle um, of each of these. I'd love for you to know like the spinous process that's on a lot, uh, let's see, is it on all of them? Yeah, the spinous process is on all the vertebrae, <clears throat> the transverse processes. Um, the body of, of it is important and the foramen, like I said. So um, those are the main parts of like basically every bone. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, I'd love for you to kind of know <clears throat> what these are, the atlas and the axis. Um, the axis has a body in the other typical vertebral processes, but is not special as specialized as the atlas. In fact, its only unusual feature is the knob-like dens pro projecting superiorly from its body. Um, and then the atlas has no body and no spinous process. Essentially, it's just a ring of bone. Um, and again, these these help to support the skull and um, allow a great range of motion. So atlas and axis. Um, this one up here is the atlas. This one down here is the axis. Okay. <laughs> okay, back to the skeleton here. And let me grab my um, some of the worksheets that we've been doing. Because... They're very helpful to us. Or the workbooks, I should say. Okay. Um, what is this bone in the arm that attaches at the shoulder? Hopefully you said that's the humerus. And then um, this bone back here that looks like a little wing. Scapula. Um, okay. Then... How about the bone that more directly connects to the humerus um, along this side um, that hooks around the humerus on the back side? What is that one called? That one's the ulna, which would make this one the radius. And the radius in real life would be able to rotate side to side. Um, so it gives you that range of motion this direction right you can move your you can rotate your wrist um there's a name for that kind of motion let me pull that sheet out for us I'll review that that's not it wait maybe it is that okay hold on <laughs> No, it doesn't really say a lot about that where I was looking. Okay. Now, there is a, um, a term for this motion of the elbow. Like you raise your arm up from a like an anatomical position and lift it up. What is that called? Okay. Um, that is called when the elbow is bent and the forearm is flexed. That's the flexion. Okay, and then back down to the resting position. And that is the extension of the joint. And then um, if it were to extend past that point and bend backward, what would we call that? Hyperextension. Okay, um, there's, uh, let's see, a motion that the skeleton really can't do <laughs> this direction. What do we call that? Um, hopefully you said abduction and then when it comes back down to anatom anatomical position, adduction, it's like you're adding the body parts back to one another when they come back together, adduction. 
And then um, there's a name for the rotation, which again, the skeleton really can't do it, but the rotation from right to left around the pelvis. So if you rotate the foot outward um, away from the pelvis, what is that called? A lateral rotation. And that's probably also what it's called when you were like when you're moving your hand outward from anatomical position, right? So anatomical position being right here, um, a lateral motion would be like away from the body. And then a medial rotation would be like inward toward the body, right? So medial goes the other way. Okay. Let's name some more bones. Um, what is this bone at the hip called? Hopefully you said it's the pelvis. And there's different parts of the pelvis. So if we look from the, from the lateral view of the pelvis, this, this skeleton doesn't know what he's doing. He's kind of got his arm in the way. What do we call this big portion at the top of the pelvis? Um, that is called the, oh, look, I have it in this notebook. Um, that is the iliac, um, the ilium, excuse me. There's an iliac crest. There's um, an iliac fossa. Um, which is the dip here, um, it's, it's the ilium, okay? And then, uh, let's see, if I move it back, so the ilium is this big wing right here. If that's the case, um, what is the bone that's like toward the back here called? This little, this little bit toward the back of the pelvis, what is that called? That would be the ischium, the ischium, okay. And then this part that's toward the front of that bottom part of the bone, that's going to be the, um, the pubis. It's the pubis, okay. And then the what's the connector point right there that's made of cartilage? Hopefully you said the pubic symphysis, right? Um, again, these holes are like the pelvic foramen. Um, so you do need to know that. You need to know the difference between male and female. Um, this is a huge foramen, by the way. That's that's a thing. Um, I actually don't know that they call it a foramen since it um, has cartilage attachments um, like at certain places. So um, may not be considered a true um, foramen. Okay. What is this large bone? The, it's the biggest long bone in the whole body. Starts here at the hip and goes down to the knee. It's the femur. Okay, what about, what about the piece that's missing here at the knee? The patella. Um, what is this big bone in the leg that is attached on the medial side from the femur down to the foot? Okay, that is the tibia. And then what about the skinnier one that is on the lateral side down to the outside of your ankle? The fibula, okay. Um, I also for, like didn't forget, but um, I have not done these yet. What are these little cubic bones in the wrist called? They are um, your carpals. And then the fingers, like the, it's part of the palm of your hand, truly. What is this section called? The metacarpals. And then your fingers out at the end. Um, those would be your phalanges, right? Those are your digits, but those would be your phalanges. Likewise, at the foot, um, how about these cubic bones in the foot? Tarsals. You can see the both positions there, tarsals, and then the part um, before your toes, metatarsals, and your toes themselves would be phalanges, okay? Again. Okay, this is all part of the appendicular skeleton. Let's see, anything else that I'd like for us to review um, on the skeleton itself? Um, be good to know the pelvic girdle is. Um, deltoid girdle is the upper part. Let's see. Let 
Is there anything else? Okay, you need to know the joints and the points of articulation. Um, we'll go over those next. Okay, I think that I am good on that. Okay, I'm going to put the skeleton down. He's actually kind of making my arms tired, the one arm. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the joints. Um, what type of joint? Um does not involve any range of motion and um, has uh, like a, a great amount of articulation. Like it's um, almost like, almost like fused together. Like what, what, what is the general category for um, joints that involve no motion? These are called the immovable fibrous joints. Um, they involve the sutures in your skull. They involve, um, the um, the teeth and the um, the joint around each tooth, um, the socket joint there. Okay. Um, what about the joints, um, for example, that allow movement of the rib cage? Like your rib cage expands and moves, right? So, like, what what kind of a joint would fall into that category? Hopefully, you said the cartilaginous joints. Okay, and then the last one that allows for a really free range of motion, such as like my elbow, um, anything that's attached more by ligaments. We call those the synovial joints. Um, that's probably the hardest term to remember. Those are the synovial joints. Okay, the, the joints function um, as far as movement is involved and a little cushion for impact if you were to fall or get hurt. Um, Okay, and then um, some different types of joints. Um, what do we call a type of joint? Um, like the one with the ulna, like you can move it out, the humerus and the ulna, it goes out so far and that's it. It just does this motion and up to a certain point and then it stops before hyperextension, right? So um, what kind of joint is that? That would be a hinge joint. Okay, that's a hinge joint. Um, what about the joints at our shoulders and our hips, like that allow for a pretty free range of motion at our shoulders and our hips? Ball and socket joint. Um, how about... <clears throat> The joint, um, well, I think we went over this, the joint with our thumb. This is called a saddle joint. And then the joints in each of our fingers. These are condyloid joints. Um, I think those are the ones we went over. Really, that's in this book, and I just, I couldn't find that. <clears throat> those joints when I was looking. Maybe it's after this section. No, it's not. Oh, there they are. Let's see. Hinge joints, condyloid joints, saddle joints, ball and socket, uh, gliding joints. Where in the body would you find a gliding joint? You would find that in the vertebrae, the spine. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. And then let's see. Oh, yeah, the condyloid. Talked about that. Okay. I think that's pretty much good on the joints. I'm trying to think of anything else we want to talk about. So <clears throat> um, you should know a little bit about um, <clears throat> the structure of bone. Let's see. I can't just do that. I'm going to present now. Entire screen. Okay. Um, we should know a little bit about the structure of bone at the microscopic level. So let me go back. This is sort of like the histology of bone. <clears throat> oh, look at that skeletal system. Going back here. 
<clears throat> okay. Um, so there are different types of bones. This was in the bones and skeletal tissue section, which I think we did. I did have you read this section. Um, so you need to understand what cartilage is and how it's a little different than bone. Um, and we also got a lot of information about the cartilage. Um, well, at least a good paragraph about it in the book, uh, the, from the body when we read the chapter from the body. So I would review cartilage. Um, what is cartilage? What does it do? Um, you don't need to know the terms hyaline cartilage or fibrocartilage or elastic cartilage. Um, it would be good if you know that there are different types, but you don't need to remember those. Let's see, can I even zoom out anymore? I do want you to, to know the different types of bones. Um, an irregular bone, a short bone, um, a flat bone, or a long bone. And so um, there's there's like these four different categories. Short bones are kind of cubic shaped. I've been calling them cubic for the purpose of the video. Likewise, we learned about spongy bone versus compact bone. And we learned about the anatomy of compact bone. If you need to review in your textbook, you can. That will be made available to you. Um, okay. And then um, we also talked about the, the little, um, let's see, is there another page where it shows that up close? The different, um, we talked a little bit about these. Um, bone growth is done by osteoblasts and bone cells are osteocytes. So like, especially I'd like for you to know those two. And here's a good one that we, that we reviewed and talked about. Um, we learned what an osteon is, which is like one of these little circles, looks like old like tree rings or something. Um, you need to know that there's a canal in there. This has gone a little ways back because this is some of the first stuff that we learned. Um, you, do, you do need to know that spongy bone contains like marrow and blood and nerves and all that. And then the, there's um, the haversian, the central canals, which have the same nerves and vessels that carry blood flow. You also need to know that bone builds up over time and uh, the less friction that you apply, um, you know, or the less gravity that that causes your bones to rub together at the at the joints, the less um, bone density you're going to have. You'll lose that, and so you do need to make new bone cells all the time. Um, you likewise, you also do need to know that in the marrow we're making all kinds of immune cells, um, immune responders like blood cells as well. Um. We did learn the parts of the femur at one point, by the way, trochanter, condyles, um, epicondyles. So it wouldn't be bad to know that, but you don't have to know it. Um, we talked about the development of bone and how there's a lot of cartilage in the beginning. And by the end of it, there's almost no cartilage. There is like a, a plate of cartilage here. Um, and we would call uh, we would call that a, a growth plate or an epiphyseal plate. By the time we're completely grown, that will be gone, and it will no longer be um, cartilage at all. It'll just be a dense the um, compact bone right there. Okay. Um, we didn't look at it from this textbook, so you might have another worksheet with that in it. But I think that's about it. So. Please do review that. Um, hopefully in our, in our projects, we learned about different types of bone fractures. We learned about different types of carcinoma. Um, you could, if you're interested, look and see about the healing process with bone. It's actually quite remarkable. The bone builds up usually a little stronger than it was before, um, although it is a little weak adjacent to the old fracture sometimes. So um, all of that would be good as well. Okay. Um, whoops, what did I click? Okay, that's that's it for today. Hopefully that was a good review for you. If you've got any questions at all, feel free to email me. Just let me know what you're what you're needing to know. So thanks for watching.